For our model today, we're going to do a uh, messy textured look. Um, we're going to style it at the end with a uh, firm hold styling paste with a dry or a matte finish. Uh, as you can see, uh, this client, he has a, uh, a side part and his hair pretty much grows in a circle around his head. So we're going to make sure that when we cut it, we cut it against the grain. The hair is freshly shampooed, which uh, I like to do before every haircut so I can tell exactly how the hair grows. So for this haircut, a few of the things that I'm going to teach you today that we need to look out for is that um, the top is going to be relatively um, easy to cut. Uh, we need to be careful of the recession. So when we cut the top, we want to over direct to the recession so we don't cut a hole in these two spots. And then we'll go back through and we'll texturize the front. Uh, the hair on the side, it grows straight out from the sides of the head. So in, in that case, we need to taper it in. There's what I call no in between. It either has to be short or long. So what we're going to do is we're going to taper that. We're going to just kind of taper it right in and um, round it in just a touch towards the top. On the sides, the hair is a little thinner around the ears or a higher hairline around the ears. So as we cut the sides, we're going to have to over direct the hair up a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to create the illusion that the hair is uh, straight up and down. So we're going to create that by going a little shorter around the round of the head and leaving it a little fuller around the ears. And then as I spin him around, you can see he has a, a more difficult hairline because it all grows to the side and it's heavier in the center. Now the other thing I always like to do as well is you want to feel the shape of the head and you want to feel for the occipital bone. Everybody's occipital bone is in a different place. Um, so, so for our client today, his occipital bone is a, is a little bit lower. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't cut the hair too close at the bottom. We're going to taper it out but we don't want to cut it too close at the bottom that it makes it look like his hair is, is uh, bulging out. And then um, the crown, we, uh, he doesn't have a really bad calic up here. And again, because we're going to mess it up and texturize it and spike it, it's okay if it spikes up a little bit. It's going to go with the rest of the haircut. And then um, same thing on the opposite side here. We can see that the hair is growing straight out. So we don't want to cut it too close. Uh, so the, the skin is showing through, but we have to taper it in so we get some longevity out of the haircut. So it doesn't just last look, or look good when he leaves and it lasts longer than a week. So what I always like to do first is uh, we're going to dampen the hair down on top and I'm going to cut the top first. What I like to do is start from the top and work my way down. That way I never create a heavy ridge line or weight line that needs to be blended out. So for, for my scissor over finger technique or picking hair up with my fingers and cutting with a scissor, I like to use a six inch shear. And I never cut past my center knuckle. I want to keep a constant tension on the hair. And I do that with my ring finger and my pinky by putting some pressure on the scalp and holding the hair really tight between my other two fingers. And I'm using now what's called a traveling guide, meaning I never let go of the hair. The, I pick up the guide, I start the guide in the front and it travels all the way to the back. And we're gonna use our center section first. So this is called straight razor over comb. I'm gonna comb it back forward so I'm still cutting against the grain. And then when I'm done, I'm going to pick the hair up to show you that even though we're adding texture and taking the, the thickness out of it, we still want it to look neat when we pick it up. We still want it even. I don't want it to look choppy. There's, there's a difference. Are you a member of HowToCutHair.tv? Learn the art of men's barbering from third-generation master barber Greg Zorian in full HD, 24-7, from anywhere in the world. Sign up for your free membership and learn how to increase your efficiency and make more money behind the chair. HowToCutHair.tv So we're starting out at about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch in length. And then we're going to work our way up to a half to about three-quarters of an inch in length. Now when I'm cutting below the temple area, I'm using an overhand grip. My hand is over the clipper and that keeps my posture 
straight up and down. And anytime I go past the temple area or past the round of the head, my elbow lifts up and my shoulder lifts up and I'm out of position. So then I switch to an underhand grip. In other words, my hand is under the clipper. So now when I get to this transition area from the sides to the round of the head to the top, I'm gonna have the heel of the blade on the comb to cut length. Then I'm gonna slowly, as I'm working my way up, pull the heel of the blade away from the comb and I go from cutting to cutting and blending to just blending. So that way we have that area there that was sticking out before, it doesn't look like it's sticking out at all now. Because the idea is when you look at the, uh, when you look at the client straight on, and I'll spin them and show you what I mean here. We want to make sure that we have a perfectly symmetrical look. We don't want any hair sticking out. So even though the hair is sticking out, it's all sticking out, but it's perfectly symmetrical because it's all cut evenly. So one of the most satisfying things is when someone has a difficult hairline and it grows in a lot of different directions and you finish that haircut and you know the hair tapers out just right and it looks like it all grows in the same direction. It's a great way to increase your retention rate. So I'm still working one panel at a time, working my way around the head. And now I can feel my elbow lifting up again so I'm going to switch to my underhand grip. Now we're going to touch up the taper in the back, which is just about done with our larger clipper and the one and a half blade. We're just going to scoop that hairline out a little bit. A little bit of clipper over comb at the bottom. When you're working with a finishing comb, what I do is I set the base of the comb at the bottom of the hairline and I just arc it out at 45 degrees and I leave it at that and that's going to taper, taper it out. Again, your blade should be parallel to the floor. Now on, the, on this side, on the right hand side, his hair grows straight up, on the other side it grows down. So what I want to do is I want to take the clipper upside down. I want to make sure that I don't go past the same height I am in the center. And we're going to shave straight down. So now we have our nice corner there. We have a nice straight line here and then we have our corner at the bottom. And if we see a little bit there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fine teeth and the corner of the blade in the one thick spot. I'm just going to do a little point cutting. Now these little steps, these little details are what's going to really make your haircut stand out. The outline really makes the haircut stand out. There's, real, there's no other way to say it. You've got to have a good outline on your haircut. You could have the best haircut in the world and if you just take that clipper and just line it off all the way across and from the side it looks like the customer or your client has a shelf on the back of his neck. It's not going to look right. Introducing Zorian of New York. Premium grooming products for the modern man. Designed by third generation master barber Greg Zorian. Made in the USA and not tested on animals, each of our styling products is infused with natural ingredients and features light, clean fragrances. Our two-in-one shampoo and conditioner is sulfate and paraben-free and color safe. Do you own a barbershop or salon, rent a chair, or run a school? Find out how we support our retailers with world-class barbering education and product knowledge training. We're currently accepting applications for wholesale accounts and invite you to apply on our website. Zorian of New York. For the style portion of the haircut, we have a couple choices that we can use. We have a, a heavy grooming cream that we can use from our Zorian of New York line, or we have a, uh, a, a very firm hold shaping paste. 
in talking with the client beforehand, uh, he would like a, uh, a matte finish with a strong hold, so we're going to go with a shaping paste. If we went with a cream, we would get a medium shine and a medium hold. So um, with the grooming cream, it would give you the ability to run your fingers through it during the day and reshape it. With the paste, the paste is pretty strong, so it's going to hold your hair all day. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a decent amount of paste. And the thing that I really like about this paste and when I, when I was designing this paste is I wanted to have a water soluble product that would rinse out really easily. And uh, you could stand in the shower for 30 to 60 seconds and the product will just rinse out and you won't have any residue at all left on your hair but yet you're going to have a really strong hold. The other thing I really like about the product is is when you emulsify it in your hands before you put it in the hair, it emulsifies like a cream, no clumping at all. So you're not going to get any clumps in your hair that you have to comb out. So what I do is I push it all forward on the top of the hair first and push everything down. Then I come from the front and come back and get it right down to the roots. Okay, and then we'll push it forward again with a slight part and then you just get your fingers in there and give it a, again as we talked about before the haircut we wanted a little bit more of a messier textured look and actually what we're going to do is we're going to take just a touch more rub it again again as I said you can see no clumps I just want to get a little bit more in the corners here it's feeling a little dry in the corners there. And then I want to just kind of mess it up a little bit in the corner so we don't see a distinctive part. Okay, and now we'll spin them around so you can get the uh, 360 degree view of the haircut and the style.